So I love men anyway. I uh, want to talk today about a male liberation because I do care about men. Uh, and I want them to find fulfillment in their lives and not be defined by the external world only. I also want to talk about human liberation and get past talking about traditional identities. So, if you had a choice, would you choose to be a man or a woman? Hmm. I believe that women are not going to make much more progress on finding their fulfillment until men begin to take on the challenge of their role identities as well. <clears throat> men have to change for their own reasons, however. Um, we can't expect them to change so we can go farther. They need to change for their own reasons, their own health, and their own fulfillment. So, it's probably a little funny that I'm talking about male liberation, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> um, there's a major study that was just released that was completed in the United Kingdom, the United States, and uh, Mexico. So it's quite a sizable study. And what they are, they called their study the man box. And what's in that box is men must be, they must act strong, hide weakness, and look good. And what we're finding with young men, they're, they're finding that very difficult to do. And so they end up with emotional and physical problems. And this study bears that out. So, if you can't reach your full potential, and this goes for women and men, you tend to find that you're more depressed, angry, um, empty inside, and, and broken. I want to say a little bit about myself. I grew up on a farm about 20 miles from here, and uh, I'm the oldest, only girl, had five brothers, and a father, and all sorts of hired men that I grew up with. So I learned it was a man's world, and I learned to be tough, competitive, assertive, and most of all, I learned to stuff my feelings. Didn't really know about feelings until I went away to college. I didn't know what a feeling was. And then I went out on a date with my, my first husband here, um, and, he, um, in the, and we went to a movie. In the middle of the movie, he started crying. And I'm going, what the heck is wrong with him? I didn't grow up with men who cried. But I fell in love with him anyway. I think I, think I found my missing piece. That my dad taught me to wrestle because he wanted me to be as strong as my brothers, as tough as my brothers. He, he uh, insisted that I go to college so I could learn a, a trade, a, a profession, <clears throat> so that I could take care of myself and I didn't have to marry someone just to find someone to take care of me. I loved talking with men um, in conversations with politics, economics, world issues. It was terrific. I avoided talks with women who talked about babies, who talked about family, who talked about neighborhood. And so I was uh, much more like a man in, in my way of approaching things. Outside was men's work. And we could, we could uh, as women, participate in that. <clears throat> when I was growing up on a farm a long time ago, men and women 
work the farm together. It was a real partnership. So it was okay for us as females to work outside. Inside, however, was for women only. And um, men would be called sissies if they worked inside. When, when my dad would, he would help out a little bit in the kitchen when we were having company. The minute he saw a guest arriving, he abandoned that apron and ran for his easy chair. That was what, work, what life was like on the farm. I want to read a list of really daunting identities that men are required to fit into. They must be independent, dominant, adventurous, forceful, stoic, um, competitive, aggressive, combative, career-oriented. That's a very challenging list for anyone to have to measure up to. Society dictates most of these identities. Women stay at home, raise children, to be a homemaker. Men were taught for probably centuries to be warriors. And all those things I just listed as male identities are uh, very useful as a warrior. What's not useful is um, having some of the intern capacities like compassion, like nurturing. They don't work well on the battlefield. So men have those buried deep inside, quite often totally unidentified. And uh, that's the challenge I think we face with males. The thing is that women and men have been complicit in uh, reinforcing those roles for each other over generations. Nobody's questioned that. It's the way it's always been done, and so that's the way we do it. You get boy, boys get to play with trucks, girls get to play with dolls, and what's unusual about that? We take that all for granted. If a boy plays with a doll, they're quite often called a sissy. If a man is emotional or caring or weak, he's called a sissy. That thing that happens with that is it stunts an individual's growth when we can't move past those uh, culturally defined um, identities and capacities. I headed up a, a domestic violence program in Tulsa, and um, for women, we had a safe house for women and children. And we taught them best how best to prevent uh, violence, how to stay out of those situations. And we also started a men's program because, as I said, men are so out of touch with their feelings and their fears that um, they don't have anywhere to express that except it gets funneled into anger as the one acceptable emotion that men uh, approve of. They can't express it with other guys, they can't express disappointment, they can't do that. So the, the anger occurs and they want to dominate, they want to show they're still dominant and superior and so they abuse a person, they know that they can prove to themselves they're still dominant. I use the, the talking about abuse because it most exemplifies both dominance and the superiority syndrome. And it's easy to see how this works. But most men aren't abusive. However, it's very difficult to change abusive behavior because that's reinforced by, our, by other men in our society and probably by the society as a whole. But that reinforcement keeps 
telling them they own that woman, they own those children, so they can do whatever they want to do with that woman and the children. And that gets reinforced by the other men that they hang out with. So, we, we dealt primarily with physical violence, but there's a whole lot more um, verbal violence. When you, when you don't want to give up that dominance and superiority, it is really difficult to make those changes. So as I said, most men aren't violent and, and, and abusive, but they do buy into the uh, superiority syndrome. And that keeps them from visiting their inner core, from becoming familiar with the feelings and, and the emotion and things that create the center of one's being. So, um, Anger, as I said, is acceptable because it says he's strong. It's also cathartic. After the anger is over, he feels fine. The pain has gone away. And until the next episode, uh, he feels good. I'd like to propose that we deal with pain another way. I'd like to see us eliminate the traditional identities as they're associated with men and associated with women, and talk instead about a whole array of human potential, that all of those capabilities are accessible to men and women, and that will help men and women find that fulfillment, that's fulfillment in themselves, and better identify and move toward their full potential. So, how to make that journey? Well, the first thing is don't do anything, except listen, listen, listen. Listen to your feelings. Observe your reactions. Observe your actions. Listen, listen. The next step is to own those identities that you've been taught and to begin to take charge of your actions, your values, and your feelings. And out of that, you will begin to control yourself, not someone else, yourself. So, let's fill the trash can with those things we don't need. Get rid of dominance and superiority. They're not a gene. They're not God's gift. They are learned behaviors, and we can change learned behaviors. Get rid of control over another person. The only person we can really control is ourselves. The only person we can really change is ourself. And if you can be a good friend, a good partner, and you can listen, and if that person who's trying to make some of those changes is wanting to do that and needs your help, great, or wants your help, great. But you can't change that person. Get rid of blame. Blame is often that thing that we don't like about ourselves. We blame someone else for. And you know how it feels when you get blamed. Be in touch with those feelings. And then get rid of who suffers more. Oh my God, I worked so hard. I have to deal with all that crap. Poor me, get rid of it. It is a, uh, it's a justification for hostility. We don't need those. We don't need any of these. They only inhibit being able to get inside ourselves and know who we really are. 
as opposed to what somebody else tells us we are. So, in summary, listen to your feelings. They're your feelings. You're the only one that can control those feelings. Nobody can control them. Nobody makes you feel that way unless you choose to feel that way. Anger is, is mostly derived from fear. When you get angry, ask yourself, what am I afraid of? Why did I get angry? And it can be a little thing, but it's still almost always based in fear. So ask yourself, pay attention to that. If you do it frequently enough, you'll begin to get in touch with those feelings that are driving that anger. As I said earlier, all the emotions get funneled into anger when you're not in touch with your core. Expand your repertoire. You have all these capacities available to you. And when you do that, you will begin to know yourself and not what somebody else has told you. So, do you want to be a woman or a man? Or do you want to be the best you you can be? So take the challenge, be adventurous. Um, I want to say I, I'm reminded when I use that word of a um, mountain man who's, who was once asked, Are you, do, you ever get, do you ever get lost? And he said, no, I never get lost. It may take me a month or two to figure out how to get to where I'm going, but I don't get lost. And I want to sit, use that as an example for all of us to take that adventure and figure out, find a way to get where you want to go. Pursue your, your potential, en enjoy the journey, and uh, I love men that way. Thank you.